And the second ch challenge is the that you the manual changes that you have to do into your build system. So we we just seen in the in the uh, as in Sergey's talk in for coverage valid fuzzing you need to instrument the code, and and for to do this you need to use some special compilers and some special uh, compiler flags. And basically, what this means is that you need to base you need to change your build system to use these kind of compiler and compiler options. And this is um, this proves to be one of the uh, largest roadblocks preventing companies to integrate fuzzing. Um, in, in large projects, you partly have different uh, different build systems for different components. Um, in some cases, you have uh, the compiler hard coded into the build script, which is not makes it less configurable. So you have, and you have to be aware of these options and changes that you need uh, to do in order to have uh, effective fuzzing. And so the last step is um, you, you have to create a fuzz test. So you have to create a sort of a test harness that would take the input from the fuzzer, it would act as a bridge between the fuzzer and, and your software. And while with so with with with, with open source soft, with open source fuzzers and fuzzing engines, you, you have to address these challenges um, by yourself manually. And um, let's see how um, these challenges, um, how we uh, address these challenges and help uh, have developers integrate fuzzing to their development process making fuzzing more acceptable for both management and, and developers. So here we see sort of the complete workflow that you need to do uh, when you integrate fuzzing in, in CI, in, in, in the development process. So you start with an initial setup, you create your, your the fuzz tests, and with each change to the code, Fuzzing is started is triggered in, in, a C, in a continuous integration where you instrument the code, you fuzz the code, then you see the report, and then the so the, the bugs that the, the, the fuzzer found, based on that you fix them uh, and basically you uh, uh, redo this loop again, you fuzz again, and you do it in order to check that your fixes actually uh, corrected the mistakes. And so we'll have. A, um, a look at each of these steps in, in more details. So in this case, um, let's start from, from the end goal. So what, what to do when fuzzing finds a bug? So what we want to do is actually be able to easily understand what went wrong and fix the bug. And the great advantage of fuzzing is that it provides a proof for each finding meaning that it provides a concrete input that triggers the uh, triggers and reproduce the bug. And so this, this means that it, as a developer, you can simply analyze this, um, this bug in a debugger. So here we see, um, this is um, Tint, um, uh, a library for encoding and decoding barcode that's used in a lot of embedded software. And we analyze this library as part of um, analyzing a larger car sharing um, application. And here we set up fuzzing for this project in GitHub uh, using GitHub Actions so that fuzzing is triggered on each pull request. So let's have a look at the pull requests here. We see that this one has failed. So we can click here to get, uh, to get more details. And we see, okay, that we got uh, from the from from CI fuzz that it found a stack of our overflow for this test, and you also get as a part of the report um, a code coverage report to uh, show what uh, so what code coverage has been achieved by by this test. 